Hi everyone, it's Sarah from Home Revival and welcome back to Paint Talks. This is episode four and tonight I've got an amazing guest for you. I'm really excited. Um, he, do you know what? I don't, think he, I don't think he needs an introduction. I just think I'm going to bring him on screen. <laughs> okay. Mr. Jay Blades, thank you very much for coming um, on the show. You're more than welcome. How are you? I'm really, really good. Thank you. Of course yeah. I need an introduction. I'm, some people might not know me. Uh, no, <laughs> not, not maybe not in our community anyway, for sure. Okay. I don't think you need, yeah. So, but if you don't, so if you're watching and you don't know Jay, um, he is on a couple of um, UK TV shows. One of them's called Money for Nothing and one of the, the other one's called Repair Shop. And you, you sort of do the same on each show, don't you? You're, you... Yeah, well, on Money for Nothing coming up, Cyclap, and then on the Repair Shop, I am like the... The workshop foreman and apologies for there's a, a noise in the background and that's my computer trying to cool itself down because um it's quite hot so apologies <laughs> for that if you hear the sound yeah apologies for that yeah you just you just cued a joke in there we'll leave that for them to um, work that out <laughs> right yeah. so no, no that's, your, that's your thinking no that, one else's <laughs> that, no that was um, a couple of the comments i saw flash okay. right up. it wasn't actually mine yeah okay. all right Okay. So we've got we've got a whole bunch of people here already. So okay, that's cool. Um, so I'm going to start off. I'm going to ask you the first question because it gives everybody a little bit of a better idea about you. Okay. So tell me a little bit about you and your business. Me and my business, cool blimey. But I've been doing this um, upcycling and painting and teaching and all that kind of stuff for almost about oh, I probably say about ten years now. But people have only seen me on TV for the past three years. I've been on TV um, doing the painting and stuff like that. So the business is um, uh, is, is basically J and Co, which is J is me. The and is everybody else that allows me to do what I'm doing. So you're classified as an and as well. And then the co okay. is the young people. Yeah. So that's how yeah. that's how the names are. You do a lot of community projects as well, don't you? you work community with... projects is very, very important to me. Um, the only reason why I'm in TV work, as far as I'm concerned, is to build up my portfolio or build up my brand and then be able to talk to more people um, and to help and support more young people. So it's always about positivity. It's not about becoming a celebrity. It's about supporting people. Yeah. Um, so whereabouts is your business based? Based in Wolverhampton, um, which is in the West Midlands, and basically um, it's a nice part of town. It's, I'm a southerner, so I'm from down south, down in London, and now I live yeah. up in Wolverhampton. And basically you've got where there's this kind of like north and south divide, but I prefer the kind of friendliness of outside of London. So in London, everybody's a bit harsh and haven't got time for anybody, but the further out you go, the more nicer people become. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're nice down here too. Further Where's than, down there? Well, I'm I'm down in Plymouth, so I'm a country bunk, bumpkin. We're down Honestly, in the country. Yeah, yeah. Any anywhere, like London is a bit harsh. Everybody's a bit too busy and hasn't got time for anybody. But yeah, it's elsewhere, it's it, it's nice. It is nice. Yeah, yeah. You should definitely come. It's beautiful down this end of the country. Really, really pretty. I'll um, come down. Yeah, you'll have to come down. We'll have to have a big work gathering. Or something. There you go. Yeah. Um, so how did you end up doing this for a living? Um, how did I end up how I ended up doing this type of work for a living was um through community work. So I was running a couple of charities um and just doing work in the community with young people, either via the police and stuff like that. The police would employ me to go into areas to work with the naughty young people, and then I would turn them around to do something positive. Yeah. What then happened is funding started drying up. So as it started drying up, I wanted to continue working with those young people. So the only way to do that was to start a revenue um, or start creating my own revenue. And I did that via um, a company, a charity called Out of the Dark, which was set yeah. up to teach young people how to restore and revamp old furniture. So everything we would sell, would then the money would be plowed, plowed back into the charity to do it that way. So that's how I started, basically. It was... Um, the reason why I started it was to, to support more young people. Yeah. yeah, that sounds really cool. Um, so before that, what did you do? How did you, you know, what did you do? What was your background before you did? My, you 
my background was mainly community work. So I worked um, in children's homes. I worked in schools for pupil referral units. Those are schools that where young people are kicked out of mainstream schools and then they have to come to a, a pupil referral unit. Um, I worked, it was mainly with the hard to reach young people. I've done a lot of projects with dads and their children. I used to run a project called Men Behaving Dadly, um, where we would meet on a Saturday and a Sunday and I'll get the dads doing activities with their children and stuff like that. So it's mainly been based around community work is what I've done um, for a number of, yeah, for a number of years. Oh, Wait, does that sound all right? Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, it sounds good. Well, it does for me. Does it sound oh, good? Sound all right, ladies? Because <laughs> okay. um, the, the naughty children often get um, neglected by society. I mean, you know, they're, they're written off an awful lot. Yeah, but also that what what tended to happen is that not everybody is academic. Like I'm I'm dyslexic, so I can sympathise with those young people who might be in a classroom and find it quite hard to focus on the board and stuff like that. Um, so normally, what you find is those children then become the disrupted ones, and they're not doing what the teacher wants them to do. So what I found is those young people then are able to do things brilliantly with their hands they're really good like just saw and taking a picture and so on and so forth so that's where you can channel them into something like um, upcycling or the work that i do um yeah so that's why i found it's easier to channel them into that kind of um line of work yeah uh, wasn't it einstein who said you know if everybody you know if you get a fish to, to climb a tree they're going to spend their entire life thinking they're stupid i think yeah the education system's not geared towards people that are not academic. They, they sort of lose them a little bit. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we, I've, I've been in the kind of educational system um, working on the outside, trying to support the young people for a number of years. And one of the one of the biggest statements that I've heard over the years is the eight and nine year olds that we are teaching now, we're teaching them or getting them prepared for jobs that don't exist. So the jobs that those guys will be doing in the future don't even exist so we're educating people for a system that doesn't really exist so you're it, it's it's quite weird how we're still educating on a very victorian kind of um level and we're living in the 21st century now for jobs that don't even exist it's like if you look at some of the 15 15 year olds that are making money off of youtube and stuff like that um no one knew 10 15 years ago that that is where the revenue would be coming from so um yeah i think the educational system needs to get um up to speed but i won't jump on my political box um i'll try yeah. not to go my there ch my children go to an alternative school um, okay so it's a creative arts school and oh. so the idea behind it it hasn't it's, it's new so it's still got bumps but yeah. basically they they concentrate on the things they're good at they wow. still got to do the architect they still got to do the core you know but right. They're nurtured in their creative side, so yes, pretty good. Okay, that sounds quite cool. Um, I used to homeschool my daughter, so um, and there's there's three different kind of ways of homeschooling. You can do it by the curriculum, or you could do it very free, or you could do it a way where um, you follow their lead. So if they're interested in, let's say, for instance, chocolate, um, you can then research all about chocolate. So you can look at where chocolate came from. Where, how it's made, how it's manufactured, how it then gets into a wrapper, how much calories it, and then you start to look at everything around that, so which includes maths, geography, the whole shabam and history. Um, yeah, sorry, I can go off on one sometimes. Apologies for doing that. You need it to last longer than 10 minutes, so you carry on going off, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, right. Sister homeschools her, her daughter. Um, how is it? Yeah, we, we, we've all got a really, I think, I think lots of more people are are coming to the same conclusion not that's nothing wrong with schools just that it's not geared towards everybody can't fit no, everybody it, in a little box yeah and everybody is different everybody's completely yeah. different same way like the way that i paint is completely different to other people other people use different techniques it's the same with upholstery um yeah. everything is everybody does things slightly different and has an opinion well, i agree that we're living in a time where that's possible that we can do that yeah yeah but definitely yeah Right, so what is your most favorite aspect of this business, of the business you're in now? That's a good question. I'll tell you what, my most favorite as aspect has got to be dancing. And apologies for that. I'm not talking strictly come dancing. I'm talking when I put the music on, as you can see behind me here, 
this is my records. I, I, I love records. I love music. Um, so in my workshop, normally I'm in there by myself and I just put music on and just dance away and get so much work done. But then every now and again, a song comes on and all work stops. And then probably about for 15 minutes, I'm just in there um, singing, but not doing a great job at it and um, having a little dance. So I would say dancing. What kind of dancing are we talking about, Jay? Are we talking about you spinning on the floor on a bit of vinyl? No, those are the old days. Those are when I used to be in the 80s. Not not now. I don't do that anymore. Um, but no, it's just having a little shake, a little two-step, one-two. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm doing. Nothing major. But no. the song, when the song gets me, I just, I love music, basically. I love music. Yeah, well, we all do that when we're on our own. I'll sing yeah. in the shower. I'll sound like Mariah Carey. Obviously, I don't in real life. <laughs> but in the shower, I'm convinced that I do. You know? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Uh, so how do you how do you stay motivated? Because if anybody's seen his work, it's it's um, unique. It is unique. So how do you how do you stay motivated to to keep producing? I tell you how I stay motivated. It's kind of um, that's a really good question because I don't I, I don't really know. I, I stay motivated by just life, just living life, um, where the the stuff that I get. I get exposed to a number of things um, just through seeing. Um, yeah. And, that, and that, that kind of doesn't really make sense. But oh, right, the easiest way to put it is my house is like 50 shades of beige. Um, it's quite beige, neutral. So when I come out, then colour really jumps out to me. And when it comes out, I always see two colours together. They're like, oh, that's interesting. And then I tend to put those colours together. But the other thing which is really motivational for me is going down to my local market every Tuesday we've got a market in Wolverhampton and um there's a fabric guy that sells fabric guy him and his wife sell fabric now yeah and I go there a bit like the old days you know when you go to the market store and you'll pick up whatever is in produce there so whatever the season is that's what you will cook so whatever fabric he has there I just put the fabrics together have a little play around I'm normally there for about I say about an hour um, mm. sometimes I can go there and I can, it, it just isn't working for me. I'm not in the mood to put the colors together, but majority of the time, and the only reason why I say that because last week I was there and I didn't feel in the mood, the colors wasn't working. Um, but normally I go there, spend about an hour putting the colors together, seeing what they've got. Um, and they normally bring me down something special. And that's what kind of motivates me because I've have a number of cheers. I've got a load of cheers, um, in my stock room and I've got a lot of fabric. And sometimes I just like to mix it up a bit. I like to do things slightly different. And I like to put a button where you shouldn't be putting a button. I like to put fabric where you shouldn't be putting fabric or, or do piping and don't have it going all the way around. I just want to stop it there. But some of those um, buttons, the one leg, the piping, what I call those is a beautiful mistake. So I've made a mistake, but then I look back at it and it's like, wow, that does look cool. So yeah, yeah. It does. yeah. Love so the mistakes are my motivation and then real life is my motivation as well so you just organically get your inspiration you don't go to certain places to try to to, to get it no I, I go no i don't go anywhere to get it if anything it's music that will give me my inspiration but majority of the time it's just um yeah it's just life you know what i mean just live life and then you're like okay why don't i do something like that um there's a number of projects that i'm doing now the beauty is this when i have when I don't film, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I get so many ideas, 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 and I've got so much stuff coming now that it is like, I don't know how to offload it all. It's just unbelievable. Wait till you see what's coming. It is. You teased wow. me the other day on the telephone and you haven't told me no more, so that's... that's no, I know. It's, it's, it's dribs and drabs, but I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, yeah, it's, it's like, wow, it's, it's really well, cool. It's because uh, when it can get you that excited and passionate, you know it's yeah. good. You know it's going to yeah. be good. No, I'm always, I'm always excited and always passionate about anything I do. And this is the thing: if you see something I've posted on social media, you see something that I've, um, I've worked on, you will only see what I'm happy with. If I'm not happy with it, you won't see it. Um, yeah. So as I said, I said this many times before, but I design for me first of all, and then once I'm happy with it then you guys get to see it. And then some people buy it. Yeah, and, and it's funny because 
Um, at the moment in the furniture world, we've got like a little craze of mid-century modern furniture. So yeah. that's like, that's selling like hotcakes. Yeah. Um, I've got a fantastic supplier. I could get it. I could do it. But I look at it and I, I don't like it. I don't want to do it. It doesn't inspire me to paint it. I don't like the lines. I don't like clean lines. It's it's just not for me. And so, right. and so I, I, I might be missing out on a beat. I've got a shop. I should probably do what's best for the business. But I cannot bring myself to do that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's it's hard. Some of us, some of us are fortunate enough that we could do stuff that we love doing. Some people yeah. just have to knock out the the painting. Just do whatever well, it is. Stuff. They're doing some amazing stuff with it. You know, it's. Yeah. it's I can look at it and I can appreciate it. I really like it, but I don't want. I don't want to have to. I don't want to go near it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay. I like curves. I don't like straight lines. It's like mid-century. It's not my bag. So, yeah. you know, everything but, is different. Yeah, everything is different for everybody. I like. I like across the board. I don't only like mid-century. There's some designers that I do like. But there's some chairs like you've got a chair in the background there. I like those kind of chairs. I like the chair over to your left. I. I mm -hmm. like a lot of furniture because then yeah. I'm able to see the potential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do. <laughs> so, what would you say um, the the challenges are for you know small independent businesses like ours? What what do you see as the challenge? I get this question all the time, and the biggest challenge I would say, even as a challenge for me, is selling. Selling is is a massive problem because what you've got to think if the market is flooded with a number of people and i'm not knocking shabby chic but let's say for instance everybody's doing shabby chic then how do you sell your product if you've got someone down the road selling it for a tenner you're selling it for 20 and then someone up the road is selling it for 30 40 50 it's yeah. kind of like it's hard selling is really really hard i get people emailing and messaging me asking how can i sell this product and don't get me wrong, in, in, in shows like Money for Nothing, we make it seem like it's easy. Within half an hour, 45 minutes, I've been to the recycling centre, I've collected an item, I've fixed it, I've done it up and I've sold it and I've given the person back their money. Now, in a real life situation, you can never, ever do that in 45 minutes. It's not yeah. going to happen. With mm -hmm. Money for Nothing, it takes us at least anything between nine to 15 days to film an episode. So... You have to condense it down. Otherwise, no one's going to watch a film or watch a program for nine or 15 days. It's like Jay's waiting at the recycling center and he hasn't collected anything. Come on. This is boring. Dry. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like. So yeah. selling, I would say, is probably the hardest thing and getting it correct. And one of the things I, t I do a lot of mentoring with young people who start their businesses and also some older people who have got an established mm -hmm. business. And what I'm always amazed at is that some people don't do their market research or know who they're selling to. Now, I've done my market research beyond the point of doing my market research. Even now, that to the extent where how I sell my items is I sell them before I actually do up an item. So I've created desire before I then say, okay, here's my product, somebody buy it. I want to say, here's a product I've made already. You know the potential of what I could be doing. Why don't you buy something like this? Oh, can I buy that? And then you always say, no, it's sold. And then once it's sold, someone wants it. That yeah. element of being unable to obtain something is what some people find desirable. And the market or the people that I sell to, that's what they are. So you have to understand who you're selling to, how you yeah. sell to them, and then you sell to that to that person in that kind of way. So selling is the hardest. It's very, yeah. very hard. Well, um, we've got lots and lots of groups in Facebook for women that are set up groups for that explicit purpose of elevating upcycling, upcycling so that it's not shabby chic, so that they, they give them guidelines on what to price it at, so that we're not undervaluing our work, so that we're not, you know, tipping the market, like you said, somebody's selling it for a ridiculous low prices. Yeah. And so I think we're doing a fantastic job with that. That's that's working across across the board, I think. There's okay. Here actually on now that do that what sort of work yeah and for the um market research exactly like, there as well i can see i can see someone in the corner there does that mean i can see the people oh, sorry westall they can hear me talking and asking this question about is that natalie there i think it's um oh god blimey she's she does i admire her painting she does these painting sideboards um i'm gonna go on my phone and find natalie berryman 
She yeah. paints with fusion paints. Ethan and Grace, my Natalie Berryman. Are you on that? Yeah. Yeah. She, she's yes. really good. Really she good. Is one of our talented painters yes she is she's yeah. amazing she's the new kid on the block and um i was glad to see that she just popped up there because i admire there's people that i admire i don't follow a lot of people um yeah. and i don't look at what a lot of people are doing but when i see someone and they've done something i'm like wow if if they get me fired up get me excited about what they're doing um yeah, yeah they're doing good they're doing really good sorry I, I drifted off there i shouldn't look at that i'm gonna get distracted aren't i Fine. No, look at it. There's a few hours, few hours we can get. We'll answer, we'll answer some of the questions. They have they have been asking, but we just haven't got through ours yet, so they can just hang on a second. Okay. Yeah. There she is. Um, <laughs> Sandra. Hi, yeah. Nancy. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, and about the market, and I was just going to say, um, I think the reason why people in this business or this industry does don't get that right straight off is because, as a rule, they're accidental entrepreneurs. They were doing it because they loved it, and then the next thing you know, it turns into a business. And of course, it wasn't thought out because they're accidental yeah. business. Well, listen, the, the one thing, like I, I take my hat off, and I don't have my hat on actually, but I I salute um, Annie Sloan for what she's created because she's she's done something which is when you look at the whole business of like chalk paint. Um, what tends to happen is the, you start doing chalk paint in your house and what have you, um, and the next thing you know, your friends and family have bought it and say, oh, you should start a business. So you start a smallish business and you start teaching people how to do the chalk paint and, and then you start selling the product. The, the beauty, and I do love this philosophy, chalk paint and what Annie Stone has set up, it's all about um, working yourself out of a job, and that's what I do with community work. If you're able to inspire someone to the same level as you, and then they can continue doing what they're doing. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, but what then tends to happen is when you're doing chalk paint and you're doing the shabby sheet, most of the people who were your customers then become their own entrepreneurs and they start selling the stuff themselves and doing it themselves. So the one thing with everybody doing the same thing or using the same paint or painting the same style, you need to have your own brand, your own kind of distinctive mark that people can identify and say, oh, that's a and Co. I know that. Oh, that geezer, he's the one that's a lazy bugger. He only paints one leg of a chair and he gets away with it. It's like, those are the things that you need to create Then people are talking about you. And once they start talking about you, whether it's good or bad, it's all publicity. Yeah. Sorry, I drifted yeah. off again. Sometimes I drift off. You just have to tell me to be quiet. No, no, that's totally fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll ask the next question. Um, okay. What's the best piece of advice you've been given? doesn't have to be about business it could be about life the best piece of advice there's two pieces of advice um i would give no three then if it's about life as well i love this one but one of those would be do your market research um the other one to do with life is to have fun if you're not having fun step away from it because it should always bring a smile to your face um and the third one is always walk like you have somewhere to go if you don't walk like you have somewhere to go um you're going to end up back at square one and it's for me it's always a purpose i everything i do has a has a direct purpose of where i'm going with it yeah. so yeah three bits of advice do That's your research good. have fun and walk like you have somewhere to go excellent advice yeah. so in your business in our businesses all of us yeah. we've got to wear many hats so we're we're the the marketing manager we're the photographer we're the yeah. we do the social media we're the salesman we're the, we're, we're everything yeah. So which hat is your favorite to wear in your business? Oh, in the business. The favorite yeah. hat in the business. That's a good, that's a really good question. Um I would say the the, the the ideas person. You always need someone who's coming up with ideas, someone who's actually like um saying, okay, this is what we do next. Because don't get me wrong, if I'm if I'm to stay as J and Co, I have to always be developing. And that's what I love doing. I love thinking of new ideas. But the sad thing is when I start filming, um, I don't have the time to be thinking about the ideas. So when I'm resting down, and that's why with the amount of stuff that's going to be coming out, it's like, whoa, this it's quite a lot. Because I've had a lot of time to think of ideas, develop them, say, oh, no, that one's not working. All right, let me retweet that one. Let me do it this way. And then, gosh, here we go. Um, yeah, 
what's the space so ideas that's my best role I think. you get those on your downtime not your busy times i oh, sorry say that again you get your ideas when you get your diet when you get your downtime yeah all my ideas come when i have my downtime i have no ideas when i'm um when i'm filming last year i filmed from january to um december i think it was the first week in december i spent only 25 days at my house in in a year it's like you, you don't have time it's just non-stop boom, 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 boom. six days a week it's uh, it's full on um really I'll, um, I'll get asked all the time as well but you know what would your advice be if you were starting a business again and that would be um you know i've got a shop as quick busy shop as you know and because i've got to fill the shop with furniture and i've got to buy new you know stocking and you know but you've got to keep the whole place running yeah. i have less time to be creative and yeah. so every now and again i'll just want, i'll just want to stop and just be creative because of course you are once you're running the business and you've got to be all of those people you're wearing all of those hats yeah, yeah. you're creating time gets, that gets taken down to a small amount yeah no it does i totally agree with you um, and this, this is the last one, and then we'll go to some questions from the girls. Um, what? Tell us three random facts about you that we wouldn't know. Three random facts. Um, when I'm at home, I eat. When I'm at home and when I'm on the road as well, I eat the same thing all the time. Um, so at home, I always have salmon or trout. Um, I listen to classical FM in the radio, in the car, like just chilling out, and. Um, I, I go I get up at five I think I get up at five thirty every morning and um I'm at the gym and do social media at that time and then I'm um, ready to rock and roll. The, another random fact, I'm gonna do four, is it takes me about an hour to get ready, an hour and a half to get ready. I'm worse than a woman. Um because once a music or some song comes on the radio or I play a song, um I'm just dancing around the house and pottering about i don't actually get ready and go out so if i'm supposed to be somewhere at nine o'clock i start getting ready at about half six seven o'clock so you're dancing in the mirror with your hairbrush then i, I, I wish i did have a hairbrush um <laughs> no i don't i just i just dance around i don't even look in the mirror because i think i would embarrass myself um so yeah i'm just dancing around yeah there's no 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 hairbrush no mirror hairbrush. <laughs> no um, there's a couple of questions that they had already asked me to ask you and yeah. one of them was um how did you get chosen to chosen excuse me for money for nothing um a number of years ago i was doing a show um, no, i was running a charity called out of the dark um the guardian newspaper came and done a video of me and basically that went viral all the tv companies started contacting me and asking me to be in different shows and stuff like that um, I wasn't in any of them, but Money for Nothing came and filmed the pilot with me at my workshop, and that's how I got to be in Money for Nothing. So, I Money for Nothing, an artisan for two episodes or two series, two series, and then um, became a presenter in series three. Amazing. Yeah. It's um, and the other one was: Are you thinking about bringing out a clothing line? <laughs> That's a good question. I'd love to know who asks you that question. Um, who asks that question? I'll find out because it's on the events page, so I'll find that out for you. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I'm going to have to say no comment. Really? <laughs> yeah. You heard it first. You heard it first. We've got an exclusive. Yeah. Um, you Jess Campbell. Yeah, that was right. I thought, when, I thought I'll, I'll ask because they made the effort to. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll a bit of random question i know you always look dapper definitely but i didn't think i'll just work well, i didn't put the two two whoever asks that question that's a really good question and normally um i will always answer everything um but when the cat's out of the bag i can't let, i can't answer a question like that so i have to the, me not answering will give you the answer there you go all right oh, that that's good enough we'll take it okay all right cool. so Jess Campbell said, Jay, with your background in community work, what advice would you give to someone with a disadvantaged background struggling with the education system who's wanting to have a fresh career path? Is the person struggling with the educational system with their children or is it themselves? 
I think it's an older person. Yes, it's like a yeah. Okay, so they're struggling. With, well, basically, the, the thing I would say is if, it, like what I say, walk like you have somewhere to go. Now, I went into the educational system at, oh, I, I can't remember how old I was. I was an older student. And I only found out I was dyslexic when I went to university. So the first year, I really struggled. Um, and then the second year, um, someone said to me, oh, you should see if you're dyslexic, like the, do a test. So I paid, I think it was £20 or something to do this test. And then, yeah, I was dyslexic. And then from there, I got a lot of help um, identifying that I couldn't write um, or spell, but I could talk. So they would give me a scribe and stuff like that. So the scribe will ask me the question and then I will talk the question or talk the reply to them. But it's very, very hard, I would say. The educational system, what you've got to understand is sometimes the educational system is the educational system. It is institutionalized. It is a box. And as it's a box, if you're a creative or you're someone that doesn't fit in that box, you really sometimes you have to just remove yourself away from it. It's the way I see it. Like for me... Um, really what what fires yourself yeah it's like once you find like someone asked me and i'm going to do a vlog we're not necessarily i'm going to post up these um, replies someone asked me about um how do you what's the word what advice would you give someone who has no natural talent and i believe we all have a talent but we just haven't found it because just because yeah. the educational system says you get all these qualifications then it equals a good life a good job and you live happily ever after it doesn't work that way for everybody not everybody does follows that kind of pattern so it's only when you find out oh that's going to work for me so if you look at someone like uh, sir richard branson he's done amazing things and he's dyslexic um so yeah. alan sugar or lord sugar is his name started on a market stall so no one would have thought oh from a market stall to him yeah. having his own business running the football clubs and then now being on tv it, 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 you don't know where your path's going to take you but one of the things you do need to do is be true and passionate to yourself. Um, so never try to fit um, a, a square peg in a round circle. And sometimes education is that square peg because it doesn't fit for all of us. Um, Sorry. Somebody, uh, no, no, that's good. Um, some, Stevie asked, what's been your most fulfilling experience? There's, I'll tell you what, there's so many fulfilling experiences. Um, there's a couple I can speak of that um, I went to a concert. If anybody reads my blogs, they would know that this um, this happened to me. I took my daughter to the first ever concert I went to. It was a little mix concert. And um, the the girl on the stage, Leanne, is one of the girls that I mentored and helped um, gain confidence and what have you. Um, and she was crying through one of these numbers um, that she was singing. And I could see her was crying. So when we went backstage, I said to her, why are you crying? What, what, what's up? You're all right. Like she said, the reason why I cried is because of knowing that you was in the audience and the, 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 how far I've come. It just dawned onto me at that specific time. I couldn't see you, but I knew where you were sitting. And it was just like, it hit me at that moment, just knowing that you was in the audience. So that was one. And then also there was the girl that I worked with, um, Verity. Um, and basically she got brought to my attention because she, slipped through the system and all that kind of stuff um hadn't smiled for a number of years and working with her um yeah she just began to smile and her mum came in one day and she was saying to me she was quite upset her mum was crying all that stuff and i was like oh what's going on is everything all right she just said to me no verity's come home she explained all what she was doing via the craft and what she's going to do to her grandfather's chair and she just smiled and i just wanted to let you know that like, i was blown away by that the, the, yeah. there's so many it's a joke um to tell them the truth but those are two that like poof, just come straight to my mind that would be um that would hit home wouldn't it yeah yeah <laughs> um somebody said when you identify why you struggle at school it can no i can't read that one it's disappeared off the screen okay um one of our one of the girls I know is combining upcycling with mental health support through creating a new well-being hub. Yeah. Um, do you have any good advice for her? Um, her Taylor. I would say it's 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 one of those things where um, when you're dealing with mental health, everybody's issues are completely different. So rather than just tire everybody with the same brush or completely um, follow the same pattern for everybody. 
allow your users to um, to shape what you're trying to deliver. So be more organic. Um, yeah. I'm starting something very similar, but not with mental health. Um, and I'm going to allow my people that are part of it to actually shape what we do and, 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 and develop the actual group. So mental health is very important that the, the people that are taking part feel some kind of ownership to it. So that's all the advice I would give. Yeah. Um, Karen Collins said that Sarah does a good running man. I'll do. I'll come. I'll do. There you go. <laughs> we'll have to have a dance off. <laughs> I don't do it in front of anybody, just on my own. I'll do it in work with the girls and make them laugh, but that's right. it. Okay. Um, and what is your favorite hat? Like your actual hats? Because you wear, you wear a lot of them. I do wear a lot of them. Um, in the summer, it's a linen one because then the, the breeze gets through and I can feel it through my hair. I don't have much hair anyway. So, um, But in the winter, you would always see me wear either a cashmere or a wool hat because it's, it's just warmer. Um, and I do love a hat. A lot, of the, a lot of the style of what I wear is based upon the 1920s and the 1930s when the guys used to go to work in a three-piece suit and come home from work in a three-piece suit with a flat cap. Um, and that's yeah, that's kind of my style. So it, it's that mixed with a little bit of um, urbanness. So I'll have the bright trainers, or I'll have something slightly funky to just modernise it a bit. So yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't think we're getting any more. Oh no, I can't see that one. It's disappearing. Um, somebody, Michelle Hill said, "Our heart of the half loves your leather leather apron." Oh, I've got my tongue tied then. Yeah, the, le the, the, the leather apron is um oh I just sus I just pressed this thing. I can see the questions as well. This oh, is yeah. very modern, isn't it? Yeah. Come I didn't on. know you could do that. What did you press? I just pressed see, the comments. I'm seeing comments come out and it's just like press it, see all. Oh. But they are coming up fast and furious. Cool blimey. All right. Um the 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 do you own a pocket watch and chain? No, I don't. And and that's funny you should say that. Um, Michelle, I was gonna buy one the other day and I saw one. Um but I've only got one waistcoat. So as I've only got one waistcoat, um, it might defeat the object. Um, yeah, with regards to the keepsake that you put on your dressing table or it's just something that you should... I tell you what, I've got so many, so many little things that I like to have around me. Um, it's quite, um, yeah, I've got too many, actually. I need to stop. I'm a bit of a hoarder, um, I think. Um, but someone asked here, I just want to ask this question. Does the film pay better... And painting and do you miss the creativity when you're filming okay does the filming pay better there is this old myth in filming um the only people that really make money in the filming i would say is actors and actresses they make a lot of money so presenters we don't make a lot if anything i probably make more money off of my normal stuff that i do than i do the filming and stuff like that um creativity um do I miss it? Yes, bless you. No, you didn't sneeze. You just coughed, didn't you? I was going to say bless you. Didn't even say sorry. Sorry. Um, I do, I do miss the creativity um, when I'm filming. That's why now I'm back in the workshop. Yeah, it's really good. A really nice time. Um, do you work on just chairs? You do. I focus on chairs, sofas. I, I, I mainly focus on chairs because uh, you can have a statement with a chair. Most of my competitors, um, the people who I believe I am competing with and trying to how can you explain it okay when you look at business and you look at the interior as well dfs furniture village and ikea own at least um i would say 80 if not 90 percent of households in every 80 to 90 percent of the households there will be a dfs or there'll be an ikea piece of furniture now to have something like mine in there has to be next to something like that and because of the price that I charge, um, it appeals to a certain demographic of, of people. And that demographic might not have the DFS. They might go to other furniture stores where they pay a little bit more. So like the Hills, um, the Liberties and so on and so forth. So those are the kind of people that I'm aspiring to be. So uh, I don't even know what the question was. Chairs, that's it. You mentioned about cheers. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I focus on a load of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I love so everything. Yeah. Mm. Really cool. Um, so, uh, so, lovely to listen to. What colour is your front door? That was from Emma. So, say that again. What colour is your front door? Uh, what colour is the front door? I think it's black. Yeah, I think it's black. 
Yeah. Um, someone's written here, there's a lot of negative programming in formal education. There's a lot of education one there, isn't it? Um, we got that one off on the wrong foot, I reckon. We were talking about, well, it, it goes where it goes. Yeah, that's true. Oh, this other, is really good. I do like doing this. It's where, really else nice. be, where else would be your dream ticket destination other than Barbados? It's going to sound really corny, but it's my workshop. I really like my workshop. Um, it's, 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 it's a really good place. Uh, the the workshop, Jay. No one can get a cocktail there. <laughs> no, because the, the workshop, I tell you, it's... Yeah, it's just a really special place. Um, and I just get to create loads of stuff in there. And also just sitting there, just thinking, surrounded by stuff I've created um, and colours and, 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 and fabric. It's it's a really nice place. Um, yeah, I really like it. Oh, I miss that. I used to work from home. I've got a, a huge she shed. Yeah. And I used to spend time at there. So, of course, the next piece of furniture that I would be doing, I would just... I would just wait until it yeah. decides exactly what it wanted do you know what i mean i have the time to be creative and, yes. you know, obviously, and i'm a bit messy in the workshop i'm nothing like you i've seen your workshop and the clothes <laughs> i'll get paint everywhere everywhere <laughs> I, love it. I enjoy it but yeah. in the workshop it'll be messy but i might see a piece of fabric on the floor next to the paint next to a piece of furniture do you know what i mean in that word of course in the shop workshop i don't get a chance to do that yeah yeah i do miss that i do miss yeah, that's why I say the biggest thing for me is for people to have fun doing what they're doing because once you lose that element of fun, it becomes a bit too serious. I know a lot of um, designers that have grown big and then what they they come off of the tools so they don't actually do the work um, and then they lose that kind of element. And it's always nice to just get back and get – in my, my world, the shirt gets dirty on the cuffs and the neck and stuff like that, but – not on the body's head. Yeah. 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 She works with, she said um that I am very messy. I am. I okay. think I think creative people are I always clean up afterwards. Right. While I'm working, I need to see it all, it's gotta be there. And yeah. then once I'm done, everything gets cleaned and tidied up and put away, but not until I'm finished. Not until afterwards. <laughs> Oh, bless. Yeah, this is quite good. What ones can you see? Um, uh, lend you, I can lend, someone said I can lend you one of my waistcoats. Well, that's quite nice. Thank you. Um, I got, I got a cool, I got a cool waistcoat the other day. I got, as a matter of fact, I got two. I got one that's wool and then one that's just like a normal, like a, like a suit material. Um, okay. All right. These things, this is cool. I think we did, we've answered quite a lot. Did you? Um, Black Modes is great LP. Oh, uh, someone asked me. Oh yes, Chris. Um, he was in the record. Chris was in the record shop then. Must have been. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Chris Martin. Um, he he asked me if I bought an album because I was in a record sh store the other day and I bought a Leroy Hudson. Um, oh, this. Yeah, I bought I bought this the other day. I think you could see that. Yeah. Yeah, I bought that and um. I was going to buy an Isaac Hayes one, but I didn't buy it. But no, I didn't get it, Chris. I didn't get it in the end, mate. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, Somebody else said, um, can you get me some tomorrow's Beach Beasties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you get me some tomorrow's Beasties fabric? Do they not sell it? Is it just at the, the market that you were talking about? No, Timorous Beasties you buy from Scotland. Um, I've had a brilliant relationship with Timorous Beasties for a number of years. Um, yeah, their fabric is to die for. Um, and, and, and for me, it, what it does is it elevates my product to an, another kind of dimension because obviously if everybody's doing up, upholstery and everybody's doing things in a particular way, well, what will make your product stand out? And you have to have a fabric that's kind of like, wow. Um, yeah. And that's why I stick with Timorous Beasties. Um, there is Badgers of Bohemian is another one that I love using. And the colour and form is is who I love using as well. So there's certain designers that I would use. And then I also use Anna Jacobs as well. Um, and then I look on Instagram and see what jumps out to me. So whatever jumps out, like, bam, I'm going to I'm gonna go for that. And, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah, we've got an upholsterer in the shop. So we've got another small business inside my shop. And right. um, 
but most of hers are commissioned. So someone comes in and goes, this was my granddad's. Can you make it fit into my front room sort of thing? You know, so yeah. I don't, we don't get the, um, you know, yours is done differently, isn't it? Yours is not done by commission. You just, you do what you want. I do what I want, first of all, but then people then don't buy. Not all of my stuff is sold. Some some of the things I create, people are like, oh, I don't want that. Um, and that's totally understandable. But then there's something that has been created and someone buys it and then everybody wants it. Everybody wants that one thing. But it's like, I'm sorry, you can't have it because that one chair was, that was it. That's chairs by itself. No, yeah, no one else can. And I can't find that same chair again. It's not like I can go to Ikea and just cover one of those chairs. Um, yeah. Listen, then. So if somebody gets hold of you and says, I want this pink with green piping and yeah. You, yeah. yeah. I do I do a lot of um I do a lot of commissions. Um there's a lot of people that actually contact me directly and just say, Yes, this is what I want. Um and then there's yeah, people go to the shop and they will buy stuff that's in the shop. Um but and then there's 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 stuff that I'm working on that should be released, you guys will hear about and I think Mark, really, really cool. When it comes to the word cool, this one is just um this is top cat level. So you know top cat, he that cartoon? I've seen him top cat, yes. There you go. I'm showing the age a bit there, but it's it's that kind of cool. Like, wow. Now top cat was cool, I think. <laughs> How's the new That's workshop so going? That's Natalie. Yeah, the new workshop's going fine. Um thank you, Natalie. Um hope you're well after the uh accident that you had, if I'm not mistaken. And um well done for taking that picture down that I told you to take down because it gave too much information um, <laughs> of who you was and where you live. Yeah. So well done, Natalie. Um, would you? Sorry, sorry for reading out these questions, but there's one there. Would you recommend someone who is in business also to include upholstery? Um, it depends. Uh, including upholstery is, is is another element, and it will add a lot of um, cost to your business. Um, because there's a lot of things that you have to buy, machines and all this kind of stuff. Um, but if there is a need, as I said before, what you've got to do is do your market research. If there's a need for upholstery in your area and attached to your business such as yourself, um, then, yeah, it's worth doing it um, all day, every day. So, yes, I would recommend it, but not if you haven't done your market research. That's it. Yeah, I mean, for, for ours in the shop, we... We provide the whole experience for it, you know, um, all the services that you need to make your house beautiful. You know, so we've yeah. got the paint, we've got furniture, we've got lighting, we've got so we've got the whole deal, you know, the flooring yeah. and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So it does work. Oh look at that one. There's someone's birthday. Do you see that one? It's someone's birthday. The shadows. Yeah. birthday. Oh bless her. Um, happy oh, birthday. birthday. Sing happy birthday to her, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my singing is not great. I'm telling you, it's it's a bit naughty. Um, but yeah, happy birthday weekend recommendations. Um, God blimey, do you know what I do at the weekend? Which is quite sad. I go to my workshop. Um, I'm at the workshop. I'm at the workshop. I'm at the workshop. Um, so weekend recommendations. I tell you what I did do with the missus the other day. We went and walked. Um, there's this place near here. I can't remember where exactly it is. But there's like a river and there's a restaurant there as well. And we sat down and we had lunch there and we saw the swans coming. That was quite nice. So anything to do with water and um yeah, and food. Um and I've just noticed my back. But can I do can I do a favour? Can I just get my charger and charge up this battery? Um yeah, you want, or if you need to go, that's fine too, it's up to you. No, no, I'm cool to stay for a minute. I'm cool. Um, oh, okay. I'll give me a charger. Have a look at the records for a minute. Yeah, I'll answer some of the questions. I'll try to. Yeah. Um, yeah, Shona said happy birthday to Michelle. Happy birthday, Michelle. Um, Angela said, I feel that you have to do something different to what everyone else is doing. So when I was first starting out, I was famously told, I've told everybody, I've said it every single time, that I had no style. And it didn't offend me because... When I thought about it for more than a minute or so, this person was right. I actually haven't got any style, but I love that. I love that. I don't. I, I understand for branding that you would need to 
make yourself stand out. I'm just lucky that I was in a position I didn't have to do that. I, you know, and I've got a shop and an income, and I love to just do what I love. So I wouldn't say that anybody would scroll up and be able to know that it's my stuff. I don't think anyway. So I suppose I was lucky in that way. Said, um, well, I, don't even know, I don't even know what those are. Then he said, what do you think of William Morris' design? Because they really love it. But I think you do, because I'm sure you've got a blog post about William Morris' designs, haven't you? Yes, um, I do have a blog post about William Morris' designs. Um, and I do like the whole philosophy of um, you should only have things in your house that are beautiful. And it was all about coming together is his kind of philosophy. So I admire it. And um, yeah, sorry about that. I had to go down and I'm a little bit out of breath. I'm a little bit unfit. Imagine that. Come on. Um, yeah, I do like Willie Morrison. I do. Yeah, me too. I do. I do believe as well. I was just saying that, you know, you said that you should have your own style and you should be... Um, you should be able to stand out from the crowd. And I don't think my stuff do. I don't think I've got a stuff. Maybe I have, but I don't feel like I have. And the reason was what we said earlier was that I just like what I like. And I like to try, I like to do whatever it is I like to do. And my home's like that. It's not, it doesn't match. It's not, it's just, I like that lamp. I like that rug. I like, I just like what I like. Well, your style, but also your style is not necessarily, um, when I'm saying your style, your style isn't just what you produce. Your style is you. Your style is your personality. Your style is how you communicate to people. It's all about how you um, how you sell you to the world because people don't automatic people don't necessarily buy that product because of its style. So let's say, for instance, um, no. IKEA, let's say DFS, those kind of guys. People go into there for that experience. They go in there because it allows them to just feel quite cool. Now, if you ever went into a shop and you got a bad kind of um, experience, you're not going back there. It's like once we went to um, went to this restaurant, we had some food there, and I asked the person, I said, well, look, the food's not cooked very well. Like, can you cook it a bit better? Because the meat still looks a bit red in there. Yeah, 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 no problem. So they took it away, brought it back. <laughs> it still looked the same. They didn't do anything to it. So it was like, okay. Um, and then when I got something else, it looked like there was an ant that was cooked in the batter. Like he was just there like that, the little ant. <laughs> I haven't been back to that place. So when you get a bad experience, you're not going to go back to somewhere. So um, yeah. as I said, it's not only what you produce, but it is you as a person because people buy into that a lot. Um, yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. I think that, you know, if you can build a relationship with your customers. And, I've got a know. question for you then. Because um, oh. I've only seen, now that I'm looking... There is, hold on, let me just see. If, before I make this statement, it's probably a sweeping statement because we've only had one. Right, let's say, for instance, you've got on here, from what I can see, about 150 comments have been made. Um, yeah. Let's say, take an average, that there is 100 people that have made those comments. Why do you think there is so few men within this industry? Truthfully? Yeah. Not enough money in it. Mm. So, okay. So unless unless you're um you know you've got you know you've got your own brand now. Yeah. And like you said, it wasn't it wasn't something you thought, oh I'm gonna be uh, a restorer. You you fell into this business. I think most of us fall into it. I okay. think if this I think if this is a second income yeah. uh business, you're living the dream. If it's if you're trying to make it your one and only income, it's a hard slog. That's what I think. So I just think there's not enough money at the moment. It's not enough money. It's a good answer. That's a really good answer. Um, well, but then I look at people like Annie Sloan, and she started this on, on a, when she was on the dole, um, and she was getting income support, and now she employs her family. So, um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I, yeah, that is quite right, actually. Yeah, the paint that we stock is a family-run business, and, and they... They really concentrate on on hiring people, not machines. You know, they're they're the same. Yeah, yeah, not much money. Okay, cool. Well, right. why do you think it is? That, to tell the truth, I I don't really know. That's why I wanted to ask the question, and I think it is one of those things where um, 
now that you've mentioned that, I think that that is probably the answer. And I have never really asked the question. I've ne I never asked anybody, but um, just looking at the amount of people that are there and normally the people that are in the industry. And that's why when you have shows like The Repair Shop and you have Money for Nothing, I'm always championing and saying, well, look, in this industry, it's not mainly men. There's, a, there's more women than men that actually do this type of upcycling and um, redoing stuff. Even in the craft world and even in the re restoration, there is a lot of females in there. So luckily, um, I've got a big enough voice that they actually listen to me. So Money for Nothing and The Repair Shop have got more, more females within the cast and people doing stuff on screen, which is really, really good. Um, yeah, because it's got to reflect the reality of the... the the world that's out there really the, the existence of who's actually doing this stuff so um yeah that's... well i'm, I'm, be, I'm like gonna, gonna sound a little controversial Go for if, it. More, if more men did come to this industry yeah i can guarantee the wages would go up the wages will because go up absolutely men unfortunately for women we don't value our expertise and our time as as much as a man does or we haven't had the training to be able to forcefully enforce that, you know? I hear what you're saying. I I, I agree and I disagree um, because it is all about empowering people. So it's a case of you can teach people how to do that, how to make money. As um, there is an organization, come on, come on, what are they called? Upcycling Hour, is that correct? Upcycling yeah. Hour? Chris. I think Chris may even be on here tonight, yeah. Yeah, so like upcycling now, those guys are trying to, as you said, set a benchmark with regards to um, doing something. And I think one of the things with the industry, this industry, is it should be, um, it should be all teaching. So even though some people might deem me as a quote unquote celebrity because I'm on the telly and what have you, but still, I've got to do things like this. I've got to speak to people and let them know this is the truth, and there should be um courses or there should be training programs where people can run as you said that they just teach people this is what you should be charging this is how you should value yourself and then yeah. it brings the industry kind of up um but what you will have is not everybody will be on that kind of wavelength and yeah. some people will say well i want to charge cheaper or there's different types of paint and so it's um yeah it's slightly different out there yeah. but i do agree with you to a certain extent yeah, Kate Kate Whitson, who is an amazing artist. I don't know if you know her. Um, no. she does like um, I don't want to categorise it wrong, but she does like full finishes and like go. She she is a real real. She's got years and years of experience. Yeah. And she just said, um that women under underpriced consistently across all trades. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's a um. I don't think we're forced to. I think it's us. I think we, I think it's, you know, I think that, that's going to take time for us to be able to go out to it. You know, it, it just takes a little I, bit of I time. Do, I, I think, yeah, I do agree with you, it will take time. But at the same time, what it does is it takes um, someone to champion it because there are some women. Um, I look at someone like Rachel South, where she does caning of a chair. And that's yeah. a very skilled kind of um, craft that she's doing. And I'm not saying upcycling isn't a skilled craft, but what I'm saying is once you get to a certain level, then it is a case of, right, right this is what you're going to charge. That's your benchmark. You can't go no further down, um, plain and simple. But I think some people do undervalue themselves, and the only way they are going to value themselves and get themselves back up is when they start to listen or talk to people who they might deem as whatever and then start to say right this is how you should because i think everybody should be pricing their stuff at a reasonable sellable price a price yeah. someone should be paying because some people think just because it's recycled or just because it's recycled doesn't mean it's cheap no. it, it, it doesn't work that way and that's what you've got to take out of the actual industry that we are not cheap what we're doing is a skill what we're doing is something that is going to enhance your life it's going to make your house look beautiful going to make you feel good about what you're what you've got in your house so yeah this um got value what you're doing 110 yeah. percent. i think creative women especially on are, are terrible for downplaying their talents and their and their um, skills some, i would say no some because they're i know a whole bunch of them and that we pretty much all do it from time to time you know it's just that thing we do 
like it's a valuable but it's really difficult to that that just gets taught all the time i think it's something you learn as you go along in business okay I can't, I can't agree with that 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 massive statement because there's a number of women I know who do the creative stuff, whether it's to do with the blogging or whether it's to do with actual design and the making stuff, that are pushing the boundaries on the wages front and they are making quite a lot of money. Um, and some of them are in TV, some of them are not. Some of them are just doing um, writing. So some people are absolutely brilliant at writing. So they'll write for magazines, newspapers and stuff like that and they will get command quite a lot of money because they're writing about interiors let's say for instance or fabric um but yeah. i think with the whole upcycling it does need to be addressed um and just lifted up yeah whether it is courses or whether it's something that people just tap into to say okay yeah this is how it is and it could be something to do with self-esteem as well that's what it could do, be to do with just valuing you as a person um yeah. 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 confidence and having enough time in, in your chosen path to realize actually yeah. you are skilled at it and you are good at it and it is valued by the people that takes time i don't think that happens that don't happen overnight <laughs> no it doesn't and i agree that sandy's made a comment here that i think that it's um men think it's a hobby and don't take it seriously i train sandy says that she's trained as a painter and decorator well over 25 years ago you're not the only one sandy so did i i think i've done the yts scheme on that um, um painting and decorating um and even to this day, I still encounter resistance from guys. Um, yes, it is one of those things where the society that we live in, um, it, it is quite sexist. So people are going to believe that you should do certain things. And as a woman, you should be doing needlework and blah, blah, blah. And some of the best, and everybody will tell you this who's in the industry, the best upholsterers are females. Um, yeah. Not because of they're able to pull the material in a certain way. It's because their attention to detail is second to none. If a woman is not happy with something, I'm guaranteeing you. Um, my missus, who I live with, I, I, I'm kind of messy sometimes in the ass. But I mean, the house looks pristine. It is spotless. And she will notice something in here that I placed. I didn't even know I put it there because I'm that messy. And I just put stuff down where I put it down. And she's just like, I'm looking for it. I'm like, where's the blah, blah, blah? Oh, I put it in the dishwasher. Hmm? We're amazing creatures today. We are multi. Yeah, <laughs> multi That's what I meant. Yeah, we're amazing. Yeah. So um, I think, yeah, it is something that does need to be pushed. It is something that needs to um, be addressed, but as a collective. Um, so people like Upcycling Hour and then there's real, um, is it Pre-Love? Um, Pre-Loved Hour as well. There's a number of organisations and I think... Um, there might be somehow, somewhere along the lines that we all come together and start to push this industry a bit more far forward. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be fantastic if we had some outside help for that. But I do genuinely believe it's from us that this happens. <clears throat> Nobody says we can't charge X amount. Yeah. We don't feel valued enough in ourselves. We're not confident enough to ourselves. So it definitely needs to come from us too. But it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't hurt to get support from outside either. Yeah. And I think that also we have to understand that who you're selling the products to, who your market is. So if yeah. you look at my products and you look at the prices I charge, prices are up there. And then there's the upcycling where the prices are down there. There's no middle. The middle is filled with Ikea, um, DFS, John Lewis. Those, those people are filling up there. So there needs to be an alternative. And once the the the, the, what's the, the collective kind of come together and organize it, all, I think whew, you, you'll be amazed. It will... It will it will do big things for the industry. Um, so you never know. Us talking might start something. You never know, girl. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Love Mrs. Hint. I don't know who Mrs. Hint is. Do you? Mrs. Hint, where's that? Where, where, are, are you right at the top in here? Cool, blimey. Uh, Mrs. Hint. Love Mrs. Yeah. Hint. Hinch Army? Mrs. Hint, I don't know. No, I don't know who that is. Sorry. How awesome would that be? You're quite right, Claire. Claire, you're quite right. How awesome would that be? Um, let's see, how are you? I've used her to show the camera. It's going get better. I think women's That's very kind of you. Yes, I have been generous, um, and it's it's quite cool. Um, I, I said I was going set, to so, set aside time for this, and um, yeah, here I am. So, yeah, I've been very generous. Time. We know we know how busy you are, 
and we know you've got to be on that because I'll, I'll, I'll catch a thought of the day at six in the morning. So if nobody yeah. else, you need to pop onto Jay's page. Six, it really gets me thinking first thing in the morning. I love it. <laughs> you should see what's coming there. On Wednesday, I'm posting something. Cut. Someone asked me a question to talk about um, what was my favourite childhood memories. And, um, yeah, well, it, it, it took me to a place I never anticipated. And then I asked the family if I should put that in um and they said yeah yeah just leave it in there it's it's really nice it's a nice um nice video so um yeah that one's yeah that's coming on wednesday and i don't know what a thought of the day thought of the day tomorrow yeah i'll get the thought of the day in a bit yeah so apparently she's the cleaning lady mrs hench i don't know who she is oh, okay all right okay. <laughs> okay, so um jay when i open a shop will you come and do the opening cool, right. could say. oh is that natalie where's your shop going to be natalie where's the shop um where's the shop is it going to be in hold on let me think luton if it's going to be in luton of course i'm coming <laughs> if it's in luton i'll come to luton because luton um i can double it up with um seeing my son and um yeah that that would be a good look hopefully it's in luton natalie so get back to us quickly um i do love the vlogs as well the vlogs are absolutely brilliant they are yeah they they've taken me to a place where it's crazy what i'm gonna do kettering is near luton isn't it natalie um but let me go back to the vlogs yeah um but the the vlogs yeah the vlogs have taken me to a place and allowed my kind of um audience to be um opened up a bit more and people to get to hear about me so as i was saying earlier it's not only that what you create is what people buy your brand and stuff like that but people buy your personality people buy your philosophy your thinking the way you conduct yourself so the way that i conduct myself and you will see some of the young people make comments um who i've been teaching since they were 13 years old and now they're like 28 years old and stuff like that um like Leanne, I've been um, with her since she was, uh, I think she was 13 when I first started working with her. And it's just nice to see them grow um, as I grow. And um, they definitely keep me in check. Um, as it's not too far from Lou and Natalie, yes, I'll do that. Just let me know when you've opened it. And um, yeah, we'll do something about that. Um, That's just favoritism. <laughs> say that again? That's just favoritism. I don't, no, someone else is asked. I would do that. It's cousin Lou and... and <laughs> Oh, she yeah. came natalie came to the she came to one of my tours um and followed i think followed her on facebook if i'm not mistaken and then i often comment to people so i saw something on her facebook that i didn't agree with and i think she should have took it down i did tell her and I she agreed. Different, natalie. no it's that one there oh is it yeah that's that's the same one yeah i know i know it's it is you isn't it natalie all you got to do is just answer yes in that question. Um, think about it. Um, Somebody else start the day with your thought of the day. Someone likes my thought of the day. They start their morning with your thought of the day, yes. Well, thank you. That's really, I get blown away by people who just talk to me about it. Through social media, it's kind of like, wow, it's, it's really special because I've had, um, what's the word? I remember when I first started, I had zero followers. And I think I had one follower on, um, I think it was back in the day, it was this thing called MySpace. Um, and yeah, yeah it, it just kind of like spiraled out. And the young people have been teaching me, this is what you've got to do. You've got to try and do this, Jay, blah, 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 blah. And then I've kind of got a little bit, I've got a little bit good at it, to tell the truth, at this social media malarkey. Um, so much so I might start doing classes. I might do lessons and teach people how to do it. But I have to do the painting one first. Um, yeah. And I am going to start doing the painting ones. Hopefully, should be in February. And it's going to be local to my area. It's not going to be in my workshop. My workshop's absolutely freezing. Um, and I know Natalie did ask me, first of all, um, yeah, about that. And basically, it's too cold, so I'm going to hold it at another place. This is a really good question from Jackie. I do like that one. Where do you see upcycling in the next five years? Um, I see upcycling as a very mainstream thing in the next five years. I see it taking over. And the thing, what I love, what Homerville is doing here is you're elevating people to a level where we can have these kind of discussions and see where we go forward. Now, I love that you've said to me that some people are undervaluing what they're doing. 
it needs to be overvalued to the extent where it just plateaus out and it finds a happy equilibrium, it finds that nice middle ground. Now, if yeah. that means um, that I'm going to have to support and do certain things to actually elevate the community, I'm all for it all day, every day. So in the next five years, there are going to be a number of people that drop by the wayside because it's going to get really serious, this upcycling. The whole upcycling and repurposing is going to be a way of us existing. So if I was you guys, I would jump on it um, as quickly and as, um, yeah, yeah, jump on it really quickly. Or get serious. Sorry, so I, well. no, no, no. I'll get just get serious, and what I mean by get serious is just value what you're doing and um, get those prices right up there, so you can make a living from it. There, there is like a whole host of people in the industry trying to get that moving. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well, send them my way, or let me know about them because I don't know about these people that are doing it. So I might be um talking out of tune um that people are actually doing that stuff so apologies if i don't know of those organizations really yeah, um it's just sort of like facebook groups and, and of course chris billinghurst from um upside um, yeah. the inside the groups that people so furniture painters are joining the groups and the rules are that you have to get your prices up and you've got to do these things and these things trying just to elevate the industry in general so it is being done across the board just not everybody's on board yet, but I think, you know, like you said, it's, it's definitely going to turn that way. It's needed. It's definitely needed. Um, yeah, that, no problem, Jackie. Um, you're more than welcome. Um, thank you, Kate. Yes, Upcycling Hour is on Twitter between 8 and 9 on Tuesday. We should be publicising those kind of things. So if you don't know about it, get onto Upcycling Hour, get onto Twitter. I think it might go over onto Facebook as well. I'm not too sure. Um, I haven't been part of it for a little while. Yeah, they've, they've got a Facebook page, yeah. So, Facebook, yeah. The, the, um, the upcycled hour is on um, Tuesday nights, 8 till 9. Yeah. And you just go on and you hashtag upcycled hour and show us what you've upcycled. <laughs> yeah. Join professional painters. Someone, someone asked me this, and so I get a lot of this. Um, people message me and ask me to look over their pages and stuff like that. I'm, one of the things that I'm probably going to do is I have to do a course um, where people will understand how to take pictures and this and kind of just little things because the sad state of it is, is there's a number of pages that I see that they're not doing their self any justice. They, the pictures that they take, the way that they do them and so on and so forth, it's kind of like I'm really harsh to the extent where I'm harsh because I know what works and what doesn't work and I know what people do. So the easiest way for me to put it is when you're taking a picture, remember that people looking on Instagram, Facebook or whatever, ultimately they're nosy. And as they're nosy, they're going to be looking around everything apart from the product that you're actually selling. So let's say, for instance, the screen that we've got here now, I can notice that you've got a little thing on your T-shirt. I can notice that there's a little bit of yellow behind the chair that you're sitting on. There's a bit of pink in the curtain there. And there's also that lamp that's there. Then you've got something in the, in the cupboard at the back that's where my mind goes and that's where everybody else's mind goes so whenever you're taking a picture remember the nosy people will be looking i remember once someone sent me a picture where they were selling they'd done up a chair but beside the chair there was a table and on the table there was some biscuits with a cup of tea now i can i'm all get i'm all for setting the scene don't get me wrong i'm all for it but what someone will be saying when they're looking at that picture is why haven't they got a cup why haven't they got a saucer why do they put that biscuit just on the table there? They're really messy, aren't they? Look, they've got all the crumbs on the table. Oh, I don't want to buy nothing off of them. You can't give any room. You can't allow anybody to make any discussion about your about your product. You're selling a product. End of story. You're not selling the table, the biscuits, and the cup of tea. If you was, um, you're underselling yourself because that would be worth quite a lot if someone buys a chair and they get a cup of tea and a biscuit every time they sit in that chair. Um, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to look into that Professional Painters um, UK, and I'll probably join that, yeah. Yeah. That's on Facebook, I think. Yeah, it's just one of the groups like us, that I was telling you about. Cool. Yes. Great advice, somebody said. Yeah. You're welcome, whoever said that. Kate. Kate. Oh, I've, we've got four minutes left, because at 20 past, I'm going to go and sit down and um yeah go go and chill out so four minutes so claire
Staging is key. Staging is key, definitely. Yeah. Who said that? Really good. Called Claire Atwood. Um, yeah. I think for the people that um, upcycle and then sell their stuff either through Etsy or their website or um, the other places, you know, Vinterio and all that sort of stuff, um, yeah. that's definitely a must, you know, like you said. And like, but just, I, I'll never, I don't, I do stage my photos, but I don't do the whole Shibudo because I'm in shop. So I don't actually sell my stuff online. People come and buy my stuff. Yeah. I, I do take a pretty photo because people are going to see it online, but not everybody has to sell online, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, not everybody has to sell online. And it is a case where whatever, as I said, whatever your target audience is, whoever you're selling to, your marketing to, so you would have a little bit of attraction to know like, oh, I'm not selling online, I'm selling people walking through the door and they buy my product. So it's, every, everybody's different. And the one thing I will say to people is, um, don't, don't, don't be embarrassed, don't be shy. I am approachable. I'm just a normal person that has been given this kind of opportunity. to. Answer. So if there is any questions that you haven't asked, just message me. You know how to get in contact via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of good stuff. Just message. Um, the beauty that you've got is for the next few weeks, I'm not filming, so cool. No, it won't light up. No, the, I tell you what, the, the industry is absolutely beautiful. So people respect my kind of space and all that kind of stuff. And it's just it's just nice to deal with um, decent people like that. But if there is questions that people have, ask yeah. me. Don't, don't be embarrassed. It's cool. Not a problem. Just ask. Uh, you said, what do you think of going into a retail space considering how much struggle the high street is facing in the current climate? Retail space, I would say it, it all depends. It really does all depend on the footfall that's actually there um, and also how you're going to get it. One, one of the things I think which is quite good, and I think Upcycling Hour does this, where as a collective they might hire a space and then get all of their target audience say this is what we're doing so they do things down in brighton and stuff like that which is quite cool to go a standalone retail space it can be quite a lot of money and it can push your cost right up so just be aware if you've done your marketing then call if you've done your research then call then go for it but retail spaces current climate um the high street is dead when you look at the it, it, people are not buying in that way anymore um if you've got a retail space that has a big enough place, um, you can actually do classes. And classes are what is paying a lot of people that subsidize a lot of businesses. So when you do the classes alongside your kind of um, selling at the same time, then that tends to work. Yeah, it shows that you love your love your job, Natalie. It shows. She yeah. just said, I love my job so much. Yeah, yeah. you can't tell. Yeah. Um, I think for a retail space, um, I mean, I've had a shop for years now, and it has to be. I think it has to have, it has to be an experience for the customer. It can't just be a shop. Do you know what I mean? It's got to be. They've got to come in. They've got to be welcomed. If you've got a great customer service, there's yeah. got to be for me. Like I said, my the experience is they can sort their house out in my, in my shop. They can yeah. get a dining like they can get a, a throw for the bed. They can get you know. It's got to be an experience so people come because they know. That there's going to be something there for them. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you know, people come to buy paint, and and they go, "Do you think this color? What does this color look like? Would look like on?" And I'm like, "Come out the back and try some." And do you know what I mean? It's it has to be like a personal experience from. Yeah, yeah. It, I I totally agree with you. And then there's there's Emma that's there where she said that she's got shop in St Albans. Scary times. Um, someone who's in the mix of it right now. Um, and she started running out of the shop to pop-ups. So that in itself just tells you, like, if someone's already there, established, doing something, and they find that a bit hard, get the pop-ups in, that boosts up a little bit of footfall coming through, um, different type of businesses. It's like, wow, brilliant. Um, and St Albans, I know St Albans very well. St Albans is quite a nice area. Uh, she's a fusion stockist, Emma. She's, she's, she's a fusion yeah. stockist, Emma is, yeah? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. But I think you've got to move with the times as well. You've got to get, you've got to, you can't be scaled. You've got a retail shop. It's got to, you've got to keep moving. It's got to keep got evolving. To keep, yeah, you've got to keep, yeah. and it's the same with the business that I'm doing. You've got to keep moving. If you're not moving, yeah, sorry, you're just in quicksand and no one wants to be in quicksand. Everybody wants to be on that treadmill. Um, 
because you're going somewhere then, aren't you? Even though you're not going somewhere on a treadmill. Love the treadmill. I know I love the treadmill, but the treadmill you can go, you, you, you don't go nowhere, do you? I'm just there. Do in your mind. I'll do. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, that's a good one. What it looks like is when when you've run out of people, I'll come back and do another one. Yeah, I'll come back and do another interview because these have been quite cool. I do like this. A couple of people have said you've got to come back. It's been good. Well, do I you know what? Come. Anybody expected when when they come, but well, when they agreed to do it. But the last couple of people have been like, "That was awesome. Should we do it again?" And I'm like, "Yeah, cool. Let's do it again." I think the thing yeah. for me was I just wanted to be able to talk paint with someone whose eyes didn't roll back in their head. Like I'll talk to my family about it. Like, oh my god, she's yeah, talking about paint, you know? So yeah. and then I'll get to call this work. So I'll, I'm good with that. So I'm yeah. you can come up whenever you want. You're welcome. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm I'm up for it. Do me another one, and then we can speak more about paint because I know we spoke about the business and other bits and bobs, but. Yeah, we can speak about paint. Can you can just go for it? I'm cool. Well, let's keep it closer to March, and then you might be able to tell us some of these teasers that you've been telling us about. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be really good. See, you're clever, aren't you? All right, cool. Well done. Come on. You let me know when you're allowed to speak about it, and then we'll get you back on. Okay, cool. I will do. Well, when I'm allowed to speak about it, I just remembered this one. Um, I, I'm a columnist, so I write now for the Homes and Antiques. Um, there's this magazine. <laughs> Yeah, very fancy. Um, but basically, I write in there, um, and it's kind of in my style of writing. So it's oh, I'm back. No. Oh, there you are. You're back. Sorry. What happened there? I have no idea. I just went blank. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, that will be quite cool to. Yeah, homes and antiques. But I think I'm going to talk about it on Thursday. On my social media, I'm going to put up a picture and stuff like that on Thursday. Um, and then Wednesday is – what's Wednesday? Wednesday is that childhood question. Or it might be the other one. The question about um, when someone asks me, do you need to have natural talent? Because that was a really strong question. And um, I might post that up, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think I might just, post that up. Just get hold of us when you can tell us more. Yes, and then, and then we'll have you yeah. back, and we'll have a yeah. whole bunch more questions to ask you. That that'd be absolutely cool. Um, and apologies that I'm I'm bailing out um, at this time. But I've got to go and spend some quality time because I've been in the workshop absolutely. and now I'm back here. And, um, I'm yeah. really grateful you come on, Jake. Because I know how busy you are. It's it's awesome that you come on. So listen, don't be silly. Don't be silly. If, if someone could be busy, but they can always make the time. If you don't make the time for people or things that you care about. And I think it was Kate, if I'm not mistaken. I think Kate's in there. Um, hold on, let me just see where she is. I did see her name and I saw her flash up. I think it was Kate that told me about this. So people who follow me and they say certain things, I do follow them up. Um, and yeah. she said to me, get in contact. And I said, all right, here we go. And there we are. So I'll do it again. It's, it's really good what you're doing, really good. Yeah. Well, everybody's really enjoying it and I'll get to call it work. So I'll, I'll you know. <laughs> I've got some amazing guests lined up, to be honest with you. I've got, do you know what? It's, it's really funny because I'll just. Amazing. So I'm not amazing. I should just press the button. the most stop. amazing day, obviously. <laughs> You're talking with you. Oh, yeah. joking. No, but the whole, the whole lineup's been totally amazing. And, and everyone just said yes. So it was awesome. Yeah. It's because so you're I, doing a good thing. You're doing a good thing. And that's what it's all about. When you're doing a good thing, good people recognize good people. And then we will all, like oh, a moth so to a flame, we will just come. Okay. Oh, that's really sweet. No problem. I'm going to let you go then. Go, go do some quality time with your family. I am going to. Um, but everybody, it's been a pleasure. And thank you, Sarah. Thank you. You're welcome. See you again. All right. You take care. Bye. 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 Bye.